Hello and welcome back to the Baggies podcast YouTube channel where of course we're giving you all the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. We are back again today with another video for you. Match preview again for Sunday's game with against Blackburn Rovers away at Ewood Park. It kicks off at three o'clock. Um, yeah, another big game for Albion against the team that started the season very, very well and their new manager. We'll be talking about the opposition in great detail. We'll also be talking about Albion, of course, uh, going through predicted lineups for both sides and also taking a little look into the fixture uh, and what it could mean for either side and, and sort of just general thoughts on Albion and also thoughts on the Carabao Cup clash against Sheffield United last night because obviously we didn't do a video for that, but we'll be discussing that and giving some thoughts uh, in this video as well. But yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts and predictions ahead of the game. Make sure you drop them down in the comment section below. Drop your predicted lineup if you fancy as well. Let me know if there's anybody who impressed you during the Carabao Cup uh, victory over Sheffield United as well. That'd be good to hear. But yeah, make sure you subscribe and let's crack on with this match preview. You're watching the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. For match previews, match day vlogs, match reactions and more, make sure to subscribe to the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. So let's start off with the opposition, the home side, Blackburn Rovers, who are currently first in the EFL Championship. They finished eighth last season as well uh, under Tony Mowbray, of course, former West Bromwich Albion manager, former promotion winner with Albion, of course, not so long ago. Yeah, they've made a 100% start to the season. They've started really well with two victories and I suppose they look the team to beat at this moment in time. They're the only team who's managed to do so. So, yeah, we, we've certainly got a lot to look forward to about them. So, yeah, let's talk about their manager, the new manager, John Dahl Thomason, uh, formerly a, a manager at Malmo in Sweden. Uh, he's been an assistant coach at Denmark, at uh, the Denmark national team. He's a, he used to be a very decent player from what I've heard. He uh, used to play for Newcastle as well, most notably. He seems to have implemented quite a philosophy and I've seen a few pieces actually going around on, t on social media about him and sort of the philosophy and, and what he's tried to implement at the club, which I really like. And I think that, you know, things could go well with him. Um, he's a bit of a risk, of course, bringing a manager in who has only really had one managerial job. And I don't think... Uh, from what I've heard, didn't do you know massively, massively well to to warrant that. I think he's been out of a job for a little bit of time. It's a bit of a risk, but you know the Rovers board seem like they know what they're doing and they seem like they've got the the personnel to be able to suit a style of, style of play that he's trying. And I think it's working quite well for them. And they've got a decent manager in, uh, and of course starting off the season with a bang against. Uh, I wouldn't even say they're they're too pretty. You know they're they're too good side in the championship and also winning in the cup as well. I think it's quite interesting to see how they've started the season pretty pretty decently. And yeah, let's talk about this, those those three games that they've played so far. Two games in the league. Six points in two games. 1-0 against QPR in the Championship. It was Lewis Travis who scored an absolute banger from, <laughs> from the edge of the area. 3-0 uh, versus Swansea in the Championship as well. Uh, they really, really did well um, to, to, to sort of counteract Swansea's possession-based style and, and hit them on the break. And that's what Rovers look to do. And we'll chat a little bit about that in a second. But... 4-0 against Hartlepool in the Carabao Cup as well, with a significantly younger side from what I've heard as well. So, yeah, some stats from their opening games are, I think are quite interesting. They're top for goals per game uh, in the league, with uh, with two goals per game uh, in first. 39% uh, average possession, which is one of the lowest in the league. 23rd, second from bottom with that figure. But they are very clinical in front of goal. They love having the shots on target. Uh, and they love getting forward with, with pace and they've got players to do so. Of course, we've got Ben Brereton Diaz, uh, of course, in there still playing for Blackburn amid lots of rumours from the Premier League and elsewhere. La Liga uh, looking at him. They've got Sammy Schmodix, who's come in uh, from uh, Peterborough, which I think is quite interesting as well. He's come in and seems to do done pretty well straight away. Um, you know, they've got quite a decent side to play quite low and quite deep and then burst forward. They've got the pace and they've got the power uh, in attack to do so. So I think... Yeah, John Dahl Thomason's clearly done a very good job in identifying that style and identifying what they can and can't play pretty early on in his days. And that's, that's I think that's a sign of a really good manager when you can go into a club, you can tell exactly what's going to work. You're not going to force a play style upon them like maybe Ishmael did with with with, with, with West Brom. I think you know the best thing is going to a, into a club and identifying what you can do with them. And I think that's what uh, John Dahl Thomason has done and he's done a decent job of doing it and yeah it started really really well but of course Albion you know have done a decent job too earlier in the season but yeah it looks like Blackburn are going to try and hit on the break and I think this is going to be a bit dangerous for Albion who you know as we saw against Watford completely dominated had a very high line looked to uh, really really oversee the game completely so let's talk through the predicted 11 for Blackburn uh, Thomas Kaminsky in goal 
Uh, of course, a uh, Belgian goalkeeper, uh, featured in, in numerous national team squads as well. Uh, back four of Callum Britton, just signed from Barnsley. Daniel Ayala, uh, formerly of Middlesbrough, always seems to score against us. Uh, always seems to score against us for Middlesbrough. Scott Wharton at centre back as well. Harry Pickering, uh, a left back, of course, a, a once a bright young prospect, I think, at Crew Alexandra. Uh, midfield two, John Buckley uh, and Lewis Travis as well. Uh, Sam Schmodix in the attacking midfield position. Bren Brereton Diaz left. Uh, Ryan Hedges right and. Sam Gallagher up front. Yeah, it's a decent team. I mean, I thought about before the season, I thought that Blackburn might have a bit of collapse without Tony Mowbray, but well, I suppose it could all still happen. But I think their squad is actually a lot better than I first made out. So I apologize, apologize to Blackburn fans for kind of underrating your squad a little bit. But I do think that side that you've got on the pitch there looks like, looks like a really decent championship outfit out there. So let's see what happens with Blackburn. But let's talk about West Bromwich Albion. Of course, 14th in the championship, not doing so well. This is all at the time of recording, by the way, which is Friday. Uh, so the Saturday's championship games won't have played yet. So West Brom could well be further down the league uh, by the time that comes around. But yeah, despite good, uh, you know, good, um, you know, couple of games, uh, it, this season, one and a half games, I've called it really on the on my notes. But you know, what good one and a half games in the championship. You know, they're still without that win in the league. Uh, got a win in the cup last night though against Sheffield United. We'll chat about that in a second. And we hope for a similar performance really to what we saw against Watford. We hope for an all action, all dominant performance from Steve Bruce's side. I mean, it was completely different from anything we've seen from Bruce uh, so far. Tactically, he got things so spot on. I mean, it was un amazing how he managed to get things that spot on. So I think. For me, Bruce has got uh, the world at his feet, really, with, with the with the support from the fans. I think the support from the fans at the Hawthorns was excellent. I hope to see a similar support now uh, against Cardiff City going into next week at the Hawthorns. But I think I hope as, as a similar performance to come about. Uh, the Carabao Cup versus Sheffield United, of course, was last night. A uh, decent performance, despite, you know, what looked like a pretty second string side, a change side. But the thing is, I like that, that you know, obviously we went out of the first round of Car the, the first possible round of the Car second second round, whatever it was, of the Carabao Cup last year. But I quite like that we, um, I quite like that we managed to, uh, you know, do, you know, you know, play a, a better side this year, you know, play a, play a better side. And those players were starting in the championship last season. So it's only a, a tell of how far our champion our side has come on in this division. So, yeah, I think it's, it's a decent performance despite a change side. The, those that impressed me, Taylor Gardner Hitman was extremely good. I think, you know, right back, I think the role that Dana Furlong played in against Watford, I think it suits Gardner Hitman so perfectly. I know it's, it's, I think it's a really difficult decision for Bruce because I think Furlong was actually quite good against Watford despite, you know, what was a shocking start against Middlesbrough. So I think Gardner Hickman, it was a really good performance and I think it warrants that, uh, that, that squad spot at least. You know, the fact that he wasn't in the matchday squad against Watford is criminal. So I think he needs to be playing in the first, first team and he really did impress me and I thought the way that he marauded down the right, right hand side was excellent. And I think that's exactly what Bruce will need. Um, Reyes Cleary, we saw a bit of him. We saw uh, his first, first team appearance. Uh, first team start, sorry, um, alone is probably needed for Cleary. I thought he did some, got some decent movement in him. I thought he got him behind a couple of times. First, you know, the one time he had, he was one on one with Fodringham, who made made a decent save, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it needed a bit more composure there from from Cleary. But I think the loans needed for him now, maybe League Two, League One. Can we try and get him out to one of those clubs? Probably League Two is more likely. Uh, to try and you know to build up that men's football uh, skill, but I think it's very unlikely that a lot of time. A player is plucked straight out of the academy with no loans, and you know ends up ends up in the first team regularly. Of course, we've seen that with Gardner Hickman; he hasn't had a loan yet. However, he's managed to get into the first team pretty regularly. But it doesn't happen all that often. A lot of the times, you need to take that loan way up to the first team. And I think Cleary may be that sort of person. He's ripping up the under twenty three. So, so will there be any offers to take him on loan? Uh, I'm not sure. A striker is definitely needed, though. Uh, yeah, of course, Daryl DK confirmed to be out for, for a, couple, a couple of months, maybe even three months. So he's almost certainly going to miss the World Cup, which is a shame for him. As I said in the, the match reaction to Watford, that's a big bow for US men's national team. I know there's a lot of American followers of the channel who, who like to keep up with DK. But I think, you know, there was a bit of a void for striker at the, at the World Cup this year. And I think that Daryl DK could have filled it. But... Here's a predicted 11 for Albion anyway. Let's crack on. Let's move past, but there's definitely a striker needed. Hopefully, we'll bring you all the updates when that happens. David Button in goal. A back four of Darnell Furlong, Dara O'Shea, Shemi Ajay and Connor Townsend. 
Two centre midfielders in OK Yakushlu and Jason Malumbi. Yakushlu was fantastic against Sheffield United. He barely broke a sweat. I'm glad he only played 60 minutes because it could mean he's in the side against Blackburn. John Swift at attacking midfielder. Grady Dean Garner and Jed Wallace on the wings. Uh, Carl Ann Grant, we hope he's fit up front because he was decent when he came on against Sheffield United. But he did hobble off with a little bit of an injury. So we hope that isn't too serious. So... Let's fingers crossed that we actually have a striker in in place for the end of the for the end of the week for Blackburn. But yeah, we hope to get another one in soon. But yeah, that's uh, that's uh, all we've got time for. Let's give a quick match match prediction before we crack on. I'm going to go for two one Albion, same as last time we visited Ewood Park. So yeah, two one for me. Let me know your score predictions in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>